Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for our ePractice Manager webinar on some unique marketing and patient acquisition strategies during the COVID-19 health emergency, Marketing 911. Today, we're joined by Tom Burton, uh, who we've been working with for the past year or so. He has a lot of experience uh, working with large and small businesses, including a lot of dental practices on digital marketing strategies and campaigns. Um, he's also the co-founder of LeadSmart, which is a great CRM system that enables marketing and sales activities to be tracked and visualized. Uh, Tom, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, yeah, thanks, Kelly. Great to be here. So, yeah, we're going to talk a bit about you know, marketing and this sort of new normal and some, I think, innovative and out-of-the-box ideas that um, hopefully dental practices can start to think about. So, you kind of hit on my background. I'll just go quickly. Um, I've been uh, working with technology for over 25 years, and as Gillian said, I'm a, a co-founder, one of the co-founders of Lead Smart Technologies. And I have kind of an interesting background in the sense I've worked with a lot of Fortune 500 and large companies, but I've also worked with startups. And in particular, over the years, I've done quite a bit of work with dentists and veterinarians and other medical practices. So I really know this industry well. I know the struggles. I know what, you know, um, as a dental practice or you're up against. So um, I've done a lot working with digital marketing and helping them over the years. And today what we're going to get into, if I can get my, is, you know, what, what got us here won't get us there. And what I mean by that is that, and Gillian, I mentioned this to you earlier, is, you know, if I were to be giving this, this webinar four or six weeks ago, what I would be talking about would be completely different because the world was completely different then. And what's happened in the last four or six weeks will have uh, no doubt long lasting impacts. So the things that we did, you know, four or six weeks ago are not the things that we need to do as we move forward. And I want to hit on some of those and then I'll get to some specifics of, you know, really what can be done and how to implement that in a practice. So, first of all, you know, and this again has happened so quickly, which I think is so um, amazing. I've never in my career seen the way people look at things and what's important to them change so quickly. So, consumer and patient values and expectations are rapidly changing. So, again, what people cared about or really, you know, put a lot of attention on just a month or so ago is not what they're putting attention on now. So, and buying decisions in terms of what, when somebody makes a decision either for a product or a service or working with a service provider like a dentist or whatever, the decisions are being made already way less on hype and way more on trust. You know, on other companies that I'm consulting with, I am really, really telling them to stop all marketing hype and really talking about how you can help and how you can help people and help companies in this situation and stop talking about what you do or how you do it or hyping what you do. And not only is that important just right now, but consumers are expecting to have communications that are based way more on trust. So we want to start eliminating a lot of hype and we want to build more trust. And again, I'll give specifics on that as we go through. And Consumers are expecting their medical service providers to do more than just provide service. And I, and I realized this just myself. I went for a dental appointment just a couple of weeks ago. I think I was one of the last people to get in before it was shut down or before we got shut down here in California. And I was looking for my dentist to, you know, give me some wellness guidance on how I could, you know, oral hygiene fits into you know, keeping better immunity and keeping my immune system up and, and so forth. And I'm seeing this as a trend is that people are going to want their medical service providers to become their kind of opinion leaders as it relates to providing guidance on wellness and direction and not just provide the service, but actually provide that level of health. And patient experience is also more critical than ever. So when, you know, patients on how they go about appointments, how they um, schedule appointments, the experience at the office. Now more than ever, that patient experience is becoming more critical because again, our expectations are changing. And last but not least is I'm seeing that 
and this was sort of true before, but now more than ever, is that you know patients and consumers are going to demand more predictable payment models that will help eliminate surprises. And what I'm hearing from you know people that certainly consumers and, and people that are out there, and I'm sure everybody who's listening feels this, right? We weren't all ready for this change and for this disruption. You know, we didn't, and, and as a result, there's just been a tremendous amount of surprises, even to the point of losing jobs and losing income and all of that. And what I'm hearing from people is that they're looking for more predictability in the future. They want to know what things are going to cost or what they should expect to be paying and so forth. So I think there's some real interesting opportunities as it relates to this, as it relates to dental, dental practices and, and this whole area. So the things, again, that got us here are not necessarily the things that are going to get us there as we look forward. So how do you navigate the new normal? Well, really, as I said, as a, as a dental practitioner, you need to be prepared to provide what I'm calling trusted guidance and not just service. So as you work with your patients and you communicate with your patients, you want to provide more than just the service, but guidance and direction. And that guidance and direction and help comes in a couple of different ways. One is predictability and predictability in terms of costs and payments and, and even, you know, how I would deal with emergencies. And if I do have an emergency, so if I needed a root canal or a crown or some emergency procedure, right, how can I be better prepared for that and have more predictability for it? And how do I work with you as my dentist to help me get that level of predictability? And then the other side, like I said, is wellness. So providing guidance on, you know, oral hygiene, but more than just oral is just, okay, how does that relate to helping my immune system? How can that help me be, prevent, you know, illness and so forth? You know, more and more people are looking at the food they're eating, the vitamins they're taking, even the, the um, things that they're cleaning materials that they're using in their house and so forth, because they're all looking at ways to increase their immune system and, kind of steal up or proof up from anything that can hit them. So wellness is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. So the new normal will be, again, about providing that trusted guidance, providing predictability, and providing a broader range of that guidance as it relates to overall wellness. So obviously then the question becomes is how do you do this? How do you implement this? And how do you take advantage of, you know, if, if in fact, you know, I don't, when this webinar, um, comes out, this will be, you'll probably have at least two or three more weeks, I would expect, where offices aren't open, at least here in California. I don't know in different parts of the country, it's probably different. But I, I think that in California, we'll have two or three more weeks before actually dental offices open. So it gives you an opportunity to jump on some of these things right now. So first of all, and I'll, I'll show you some examples here in, in just a minute, but first of all, start thinking about what I call creative subscription-based packages and programs that have predictable expense. And I know a lot of practices have wellness programs. I would even look at taking those one step further. And even, you know, I was uh, meeting with one client uh, earlier this week and talking to them even about, okay, doing a program, but if somebody prepays, like let's say I'm paying $250 a month or $200 a month or whatever the right amount is, that maybe you'll match that or you'll match part of it. So if you're putting in $200, you'll match $100 of that in service. So it gives them some incentive right now and some help to really kind of put together a payment program. And to have that payment program, especially obviously if they don't have insurance, to have that payment program be able to provide and be there or be utilized even for you know, things that aren't just basic you know, cleanings and um, and, and, and exams and so forth that happen every six months. But is there other things that can be, be, tied, into, be tied into that? And I'll show you an example of um, a dentist here in, in Santa Barbara where I am on that and, and how I think they could even improve that here in just a minute. Also, you're going to want to restructure and really take a hard look at your overall online presence. And that is your website, obviously, but it's also what it's called your branded search. So when you go to Google and someone types in the name of your practice and what shows up there on Google is called your branded search. And in a lot of ways, your branded search is more important than your website nowadays. People use that to make that first level of, of judgment because they look at reviews, they look at what, what is there on that online presence 
to determine if they want to do business with you. So what we want to do is we want to restructure that online presence to spotlight some more of these, more of these packages versus just the services. So some of these subscription-based packages and programs and not have them you know, kind of hidden back in a menu somewhere, but really spotlight them on the homepage, spotlight that even in some of your Google listings. I'll show you some examples of that here in a minute. So we really want to take our online presence to be, again, spotlighting these differences in these different programs. And then at the same time, we want to look at how we can build our thought leadership and the ideal thing would be if you can create videos and they don't have to be super professional videos, you know, and even an iPhone video or something like that, where you're talking about wellness related uh, points. So for example, um, you know, a question that's come up a lot is can the, you know, COVID environment or COVID virus survive in your mouth? And if even my wife asked me, she's like, you think flossing my teeth would be a good, good thing to do to kind of prevent, you know, illness and things like that. And those are really good questions that people are asking as it relates to oral hygiene. So, you know, build yourself as a thought leader and provide guidance in the context of, you know, what's going on right now and how to provide that better wellness and how that ties into, you know, other parts of the body or other parts of wellness in general by really focusing on the oral hygiene. And then by putting those videos, by doing them on videos, they can easily go on your website, they can go on a YouTube page, or again, those will show up on your branded search, and those really start to spotlight your wellness expertise and thought leadership. So this is something else that can be done when there's some downtime. Then once you've done that, what you're gonna wanna do is, is run Facebook and potentially Instagram, but primarily Facebook ads in your local area spotlighting this sort of new approach, this new approach, your packages, and your thought leadership. And the reason I say Facebook is, um, actually Facebook, because of all the downturn here, has gotten even more affordable. It was affordable before, but it's even more affordable now. You can reach a lot of people for not a lot of money in your local area. You can really get a lot in front of people, and you have something to talk about. You have something to talk about by the fact that you are, you know, operating in the new normal as a practice. You're doing things different in your practice, you're offering different packages like in programs that have predictable expense. You're talking about some of the thought leadership. That's gonna provide a huge, huge, huge opportunity to get a very large amount of brand recognition of your practice and of yourself in your, in your local area. And then really look at how do you create a superior patient experience all the way from scheduling, all the way through the visit and afterwards, and by taking advantage of available technologies for that. So is there some technologies for scheduling appointments and you know, follow-ups and appointment reminders and even you know, managing your patient information and so forth? And I know obviously a lot of practices do that already, but I think now is a time to take a really good look at that. Take a look at what happens with the experience when they come into the office. Are they good in good service? Are they on time with the appointments? All of those things are mattering and go into, again, what people are gonna be looking for, which is that patient experience. So these are kind of a quick, and obviously there's a lot more detail that can be gone into in each of these, but these are really the roadmap for implementation of implementing some of the things I've been talking about here in the new normal. And I wanted to jump out of the slide, so I'm gonna stop my share, and then I'm gonna jump into a, a different screen here and show you a couple examples. What I'm showing here actually is a website um, from a dental practice here in Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara Dental Care. And what I was talking about, you know, if you look at this as their homepage, if you look at their homepage, um, you know, there's not a whole lot here. I mean, this is taking up a lot of space, but it's not really talking a lot about the programs or what they do. Um, in fact, if I had a, I would use this real estate to put a video right here that really talks about the importance of dental care in the COVID area and you know, what things you can do, not even just coming into the practice, but things you can do and why you know, brushing or mouthwash or flossing or whatever the case may be, really, really, really would help somebody. So I would take advantage of this real estate right here on the top to you know, again, provide some of that thought leadership. And then I would go down below here to start talking about some of the packages. So rather than talking about 
Invisalign or implants or specific services, I'd probably introduce some different packages. So I would say here are some special packages that we're offering people. So they have some predictable ways and, and ways of, um, you know, getting dentistry and, and, and having different programs, wellness programs, rather than just focusing on the services. Obviously, your services are not going to go off the website completely, but I would be focusing and spotlighting more of those things right here on the homepage. Now, you see that they actually do have what they call a VIP dental program, and that's their wellness program. And it's kind of hidden. I mean, it's not hidden, but it's not obviously front and center. And there's some information here, but again, I would look at how this could be improved to even add some more, um, you know, different monthly subscription fees that could be paid here. And like I said, even some sort of a matching program where, you know, if, if the um, patient puts in whatever, $100 a month, then maybe you match that with another $125 or another $25 that goes on account. That way, if there are emergencies or other things that come into play, they have that on account, plus, you know, the other things that are more standard here. So I would reorganize this page a bit more. Again, probably do a video here, explain the program, why you're doing it, you're here to help. Again, this is not about height, but it's about help. And I would spotlight that on the homepage of the website as well. So, and even make this more front and center on everything that's on the, on the menu here. You'll see here that they have a blog and some articles, but these articles are also quite old. Um, here, let me just see here. If you see, yeah, they go back to 2013. So this is actually kind of a detriment. It doesn't look like you're staying up to date. So if you're going to write articles, and my guess is I haven't looked at all these articles, but they're probably sort of like a canned article that may have come from a marketing company. There's a lot of marketing companies that build canned articles for dentists. I would really, again, remove that and focus on really, you know, authentic, articles or blog posts or other things that really, you know, even talk about things you're doing in the community or whatever that start to build that trust. Anything that builds trust and anything that starts to build that relationship is something that you want to include on your website. So again, kind of a makeover of your webpage or website is to be more help oriented, really focus on the thought leadership, and then spotlight some of the packages that we're talking about. Now, if I go over here, I will go over to Google and I type in Santa Barbara Dental Care. This is what I mean by the branded search page. So this, if I were looking to find information about Santa Barbara Dental Care, I'd obviously type that name in. And then I'm going to start to scan through here to look at um, um, you know, what's there. And I don't have time to spend, we don't have time today to spend really on all the different pieces here. But Right away, I would have a bit more description here about not just dental clinic, but I would say, you know, dental and oral hygiene experts in Santa Barbara, California, providing unique packages and so forth. So again, that stands out. Um, they have 34 reviews, which is good, but I'd be looking at beefing up those reviews. This is all happens through your Google um, business listing, which you, we could talk to a whole webinar just about that. Um, and then I would look over here. I would make sure that they're actually, I'd actually do, these are sponsored ads here where it says ad. I would have an ad for my practice. So when someone looks for my practice and I would again, reiterate those same things, you know, providing expertise and so forth. Cause I can, I have a lot of control over what's being done here with these ads, just so that they, again, your, these ads are not competitors. Cause right now these are showing competitors on here and not showing me as Santa Barbara Dental Care. And then I would also take care to make sure that I'm represented well on these other listings here. Um, they have Yelp, which is good. A lot of good Yelp reviews. They have the team here. There's a lot of good things here. But again, there's also, um, you know, for the most part, it looks pretty good. There is one competitor here. So I would do things, and again, the details of how you do it um, are kind of beyond what we can talk about here. But there is definitely ways to clean up your local listing or your um, branded search here so that you, your practice owns that page and you're being represented kind of the way you wanna be represented. So those are the two areas that I'd really focus on is focusing on my website and the branded search. And again, this is something you're gonna evolve over time, so it's not necessarily something that you're gonna do 
right out of the bat, but it, it's something that you want to focus on. Because this, again, this isn't just something you're doing for the next few weeks or whatever. I really believe the trends that I've been talking about are going to be the new normal, not just for the next few weeks, but for years going forward. And you might as well get ahead of the curve and be prepared and really represent yourself in that, in that area. So just a couple of ideas and a couple of examples as it relates to that online presence. So what does all of this mean to you for your practice, right? What's the bottom line? Why would I want to do this? And um, you know, how is it going to help me financially and just from a business perspective and just my overall what I'm doing? Well, subscription programs and wellness programs, as you probably know, provide predictable cash flow, even during unexpected disruptions. So my dentist that I work with is a friend. I've known him for years. I was talking to him and he's nervous. He's been out of work for almost three weeks now and he lives in Santa Barbara. It's not a cheap place to live and cash flow is a problem. And I'm sure this is true, you know, and, and he's worried about unexpected disruptions again. What happens if, you know, all of a sudden we get a, a round two of this in the, in the fall or the winter? So he's really looking at a lot of ways to even out that cash flow. And those subscription and wellness programs are a really good way to do that and to, and to really help even during those disruptions. Your word of mouth referrals will start to go up significantly because of your unique offers and the experience that you're providing. So as we talked about doing Facebook ads and so forth, you will people and people start seeing it and they go to your new webpage and they go to your online presence. You are going to be different. You are going to be what people are looking for in this new normal. And that is automatically going to spur word of mouth referrals. I have no doubt. And you will have and really start to develop a big competitive advantage in your area because you're really building that practice brand awareness, but not just as a me too, but as a practice that is doing things differently and you're really building that thought leadership. And this can really be a great way to build competitive advantage in your area. You'll also get higher rankings in the Google lo local listings. So when people start searching, what we looked at earlier was called a branded search. But if they were to go in and type in dentist in Santa Barbara, you'll see what are called local listings in Google. And there's only three practices that will show up in those local listings. And if you can be in that top three, the amount of extra business and the amount of extra leads that you'll get literally is 10 times than what you would be if you weren't in those listings. Well, the things I've just been talking about, Google does. So the thought leadership, the videos, cleaning up your Google business listing, adding more reviews, making sure you're doing the steps to make sure you're you know, showing up all over your local search page and you're in local directories. All of those things are things that Google loves and takes into account when they're ranking you in those local listings. So all of these things will give it, will have a side effect, a very positive side effect by getting you ranked higher in, in the Google local listings. And you'll start to attract more and more patients who can afford cosmetic and other discretionary services. Right? We all want to be able to deliver higher profitable, high, high profit services or more profitable services. And by kind of enhancing the experience and even ex enhancing the types of people that you're targeting, the types of patients that you're targeting and the ads and stuff that we're talking about, it's positioning yourself more as a thought leader, you are going to attract patients that are going to be able to afford these as well. So there really is kind of a hockey stick I have on this little graphic here kind of a hockey stick um, side effect, positive side effect that you'll get out of this for your practice. But at the same time, like I said, you're really providing a superior experience, superior help for your patients, and you're building you know, a practice and a presence that really makes sense here in this new normal and what people are looking for going forward. So, um, Gillian, that is kind of the quick overview on, you know, what we see happening here. Obviously, we're in the early stages of this, but um, we're definitely seeing a lot of trends and a lot of changes and a lot of, um, you know, things that are different with people. Thanks so much. Uh, some really great advice there on the, on the whole idea of the subscription model. And I do want to point out to all of the viewers that, Tom uh, has done another webinar for us 
on how to use Google and Facebook uh, to boost uh, patients in your practice. And that is posted along with this webinar. So you'll get more in-depth kind of step-by-step -step tips on how to effectively use Google and Facebook, which I know he touched on in this webinar. But if you want to kind of better understand that, then uh, I strongly suggest you watch that webinar as well. Um, Tom, one question for you that I had, I mean, I know that we're just now kind of in the, in the very beginning of this middle, hopefully, you know, but what, um, have you worked with anybody who has implemented this or have you seen this, this done or is, you know, just as any examples of somebody yeah, else? You know, good question. And, and I, and just to add to your point about the other webinar. Um, all the things that we talked about in that previous webinar still apply here. So those are the things that you would do with Google and you would do with Facebook as far as your branded search and so forth. So nothing in that webinar that we did, I don't know, a few months ago, um, all of that still applies here in kind of this new world that we're doing here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it's really early, as you said. So I, we've been having conversations, I would say, around what we went through in the webinar here today, having conversations with some practices about, you know, how they want to make some adjustments. Um, honestly, we have not, you know, redone any websites yet. We're just, you know, starting to get into that process here. So we're really early on this. And, but I really do believe that, you know, the early bird will get the worm here. The, the companies and the practices that jump out on this, and this is true, not just for dental practices or even medical, but companies that really start to look at things kind of through a different lens and more of a help lens and helping people, providing better experience, more predictability, all the things that we just talked about are gonna have a tremendous head start. So unfortunately, no, I don't have any great examples yet because this is really hot off the press, but I think we are gonna see that, but you really wanna jump on this sooner than later. Okay, great. Yeah, and I see you have your email address up on the screen there. Uh, and I know that uh, you're available to uh, help answer questions and uh, consulting services surrounding this m marketing strategies and, and websites and, and things like this. Yeah, no, absolutely reach out. I mean, you know, we're trying to do the same thing right now. I am doing, and we are at Lead Smart doing everything we can to help businesses right now. We're a small business, right? Frankly, we're impacted by this as well. Every small business seems to be impacted by this. We want, I, I think now, you know, I wrote a, a LinkedIn article a couple days ago and I really was stressing the importance that we all have to team up a bit more. So yeah. anyway, my point is happy to answer any questions, um, just bounce ideas around, whatever, send an email and, you know, whatever we can do there, totally fine. Okay, great. Thanks so much for uh, joining me and uh, discussing these new ideas. I think this is really great. And then, also, uh, our information is going to be up on the screen here as well. So please reach out to us at ePractice Manager. Uh, we are here to help and answer your questions. And um, if we don't have the answers, we will help you find the right answers. Uh, again, Tom, thanks so much. Oh, thanks, Gillian.